G'day guys, Cam Wild Wild Touring and welcome to this week's episode. This episode, I'm gonna condense four months of building my dream 300 series tourer into hopefully a sub four minute video. I'm gonna share with you exactly how much it costs to build this car and I'm hoping that you get something out of it. This video certainly isn't about gloating. In fact, I'm quite embarrassed to share with you how much I've spent, but I'm hoping that this information helps you plan your own build, whether your budget be more or less. Bear in mind that I started with a base spec 300 and it's a fairly mild touring build. It's nothing crazy. It's not chopped and stretched or anything like that. It's off the shelf gear. Nothing's highly customized and it still added up very quickly. All this work was completed between late 23 and early 24. Some of it's trade pricing. Some of it was sponsored gear. I'm missing a fair chunk of labor from this, but I've given you the most accurate figures I possibly can and I'm sure you'll get something out of it for planning your build. The purchase price of the car was $101,673. Before we picked it up, it had already had a pre-Rego Petters GVM upgrade that was $6,145, including fitting and wheel alignment. The car went to AGD Auto for a set of Method 703 matte black rims, which was $3,179, and a set of Yokohama All Terrains, which was $1,925. We knew we were gonna to be towing a caravan with this car, so we needed a brake controller. We went with the Red Arc and a Richards Auto Harness, which was $440. For communications, we've gone with an Oricom UHF, Oricom antenna, and another Richards Auto Harness to make that work for $848. From ARB, we've got a Summit Mark II bull bar, side steps, base rack, LED light bar, and an air compressor, which was $9,182. On the front of the bull bar there, we've got Steady Type-X Evo spotlights and a TJM wiring harness, which was $1,014. On top of that base rack, we've got a 30 second wing awning, which was $1,395. In the back, we've got a black label storage solutions draw system and a 40 litre Evercool draw fridge, which was $3,999. We've got a huge 12 volt battery build in the back here from Offroad Living, which came in at $13,757. From Kon, we've got their 270 degree awning brackets, max tracks mounts, molly panels, storage pods, cargo barrier, and overhead shelf, and that came in at $2,040. We've got clear view mirrors, they were $1,300. The car went to Dentless for ceramic window tinting and ceramic coating, which was $2,200. And we've got Razorback seat covers, which was 750 bucks. All up, we had $45,974 worth of additions on the car, which took the total build cost, including the purchase price of the car, to $147,647. And that's it. Well, maybe not quite. There's still a couple of things left to do that I just haven't got done yet. I'd like to get a long range tank and a snorkel, and then that's it. This car has been built to last me 10 years. That's what I wanna get out of it, minimum. Hopefully much more, but at least 10 years. You don't have to spend this much on a car to see beautiful things in Australia. You can spend a hell of a lot less and still have a hell of a good time. But this is how much my build cost me. And I just wanted to share that with you in the spirit of being open and honest and transparent. Hopefully you got something out of it that you can use to plan your build. If you're new here, consider subscribing and I'll show you where this car is going to take us. It's going to be good. Cheers, guys. I'll see you in the next one. I know I'm lucky, man, but I don't feel lucky, man. Why can't I feel when I know? Still ain't got what I wanted, man Same cause, same suffering I know I reap what I sow